Hello everyone. I hope you're all keeping safe. Today we're going to build this beautiful model from Copro, which is the 172nd scale MiG 23 UB Flogger C, which is the two seat fighter conversion trainer of the MiG 23 fighter. So that's the screw bag, and as we turn it around, we find the instruction sheet and the decal sheet which has the Indian Air Force decals which I'll be using and we'll look at that shortly. So I began the assembly by cutting off the parts from the sprues and I began with the basic assembly of the cockpit and the first thing I noticed was a lot of flash on the seat and the cockpit assembly which I had to clear off and then I went ahead and assembled the seat. The rear bulkhead of the uh, cockpit tub had to be cut off in order to assemble the construction of the two seat conversion trainer. The instruction sheet is pretty vague and you'll notice the uh, control column is part number 9 and in the sprues it is part number 60 and part number 88. So I literally had to figure out on my own what goes where and the instructions didn't really help. Anyway, so I assembled the cockpit together, pulled out my fevicryl teal blue color and began painting the instrument panel. This is the first time I wanted to try my Humbrol paints and I used Humbrol 62 leather to paint up the cushions on the seat. It gave a really nice effect to the seat cushions. I then used Fevicryl Black to create a simple acrylic wash and then with a fine tip brush I used this wash to detail the gauges in the cockpit instrument panel. And the last few switches on the instrument panel were detailed with a toothpick using Fevicryl Golden Yellow. The kit decal set comes with a set of seat harness decals for the seats and they're pretty detailed and give a very nice look to the seats once they are fixed. However, the decals are oversized and I had to trim them off in order to fit them properly. The seats were then fitted in the cockpit tub and the cockpit tubs fitted inside the front fuselage. And this is where I started noticing the fit errors in the kit and you can see here that the absence of locator pins made it difficult to align and fix the two halves of the front section of the fuselage together.
At this point, I am at the assembly of the afterburner cowling and afterburner fan section. And the instructions are vague and they do not mention which part of the cowling will face in the front and which part will face the other way. However, there were these two arrow marks on each part of the cowling. I simply used my logic and made both arrows face in the same direction and then joined the cowling parts together. Another issue in the assembly of the upper and lower fuselage hubs was that each of the wings have their own individual pivots and do not have an interlocking mechanism so they swing together. So there was no way to hold these two together in order to fix the upper and lower fuselage hubs. So I had to improvise and I used my Fevicol white glue in order to keep these wings attached to their pivots and then once that was done I joined up the upper and lower fuselage halves. The fit of the dorsal spine was another issue that I had to face. You can see that it leaves a gap out here and the rudder actually fits on top of this dorsal spine. But as you can see here, the rudder also leaves a huge gap in the aft section of the fuselage in the center. So this had to be addressed with a lot of putty. I then began the painting phase of the uh, the model by priming with Bosni Grey Primer and then pre-shading with Fevicryl Black. The pre-shading phase was followed by the painting for which I used my improvised Fevicryl IAF grey green color that I produced by mixing Fevicryl black, white and leaf green colors. As soon as the painting was over at this point I realized a big mistake that I had made. I actually attached the wrong nose onto the aircraft. The nose is actually the trainer version nose whereas I actually attached the fighter version nose. Now I had two options at this point. One to go ahead with the build as is and live with that inaccuracy but I decided to try my hand at carefully removing the nose and fitting the new one and reworking the colors again. Since the model is very detailed and it has a lot of rivet and panel line detailing, it's a good idea to bring out all that detail with a little bit of time spent on weathering. So I picked up my Camlin Soft Pastels and created a wash by mixing it with water and dishwashing liquid and then applying a pin wash to the aircraft all across. I left the pin wash to dry for about 5 minutes 
and then with a kitchen towel I remove the excess wash from the upper surfaces by wiping the tissue in direction of flow of air and on the sides I used a cotton q-tip to fine-tune the weathering. And finally, here are the beauty shots of the MiG-23 UV from 29th Squadron Scorpions, Indian Air Force Base, Jodhpur, around 2019. This aircraft last flew in December 2019 and was finally phased out in March of 2020. The kit is really detailed and you can see that a little bit of extra weathering effort has really brought out all the rivet and panel line details. The kit is not recommended for a beginner, but I felt that an advanced modeler would be able to do much better justice to this kit. So that's it. That's as far as I decided to go with this model. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed the journey of building the model and bringing out all that rivet and panel line detailing. I appreciate you watching, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. See you again in the next video. Bye-bye. Keep safe.